Hey everyone, it's Melanie of Art Studio 320 and it's time for a new project. I am back in my very bright garage. My husband put in brand new lights over the weekend. He, he found a bunch on clearance and I am so excited because now I'm illuminated. <laughs> this week I am doing a tall boy and I'm very excited because this one has been in my garage for quite some time. One of my neighbors was generous enough to give it to me and I am so appreciative. I am going to be choosing between these two paints today. Well, maybe not today, maybe tomorrow. They're both one by Melange and one is Restoration Bronze and the other is Apothecary Gray. So I wish I could do this live so you could vote, but I'm going to have to decide on my own. I have already ordered the hardware and actually I think it will be here today. Mostly I ordered it with Restoration Bronze in mind and Apothecary Gray. We'll see how that hardware looks with both of these colors and that will probably influence my decision. If you haven't subscribed yet, please take a moment and press that red button. You can also follow me on Instagram and you can find me on Etsy where I am selling some of my past projects that I've done right here. All of those links will be in the description box below along with all of the materials that I use this week. Stick around. All right, well, there's a lot of dust and sawdust in the drawers, so I used my shop vac to clean it out, and then I used vinegar and water to clean off the dresser, and it works very well. Now, Goo Gone is great for stuff that like gum or something you're not sure what it is. You just have to let it sit for a minute. If you are not sure that you're dealing with wood, start with a 120 on your sander. This is my orbital sander and my respirator. And I knew it was wood, so I started with a 60 grit and then I go down to a 120 and then I go down to a 220 so it's nice and smooth. There are a lot of nooks and crannies in these drawers and my orbital sander won't go in there. So I'm using a 60 grit to get down and dirty in, in between these drawers because I wanna make sure I have a nice smooth finish to work with when I paint. Someday I'll get a festool or a surf prep but for now, elbow grease it is. There was one significant gouge in one of the drawers, so I used my plastic wood X and shaped it and sanded it and got rid of it. Super important, even if you're not going to go down to the wood, you need to make sure that you sand it, scuff it, whatever, to make it nice and smooth before you put paint on it or everything that's underneath is gonna just show right through. All right, I'm using my plastic wood X wood filler to Get rid of all those little dings and scratches and such. <laughs> when you're sanding, just be sure that you're not putting too much pressure on. You kind of get a feel for it and then you know how much pressure you can put on it to get it nice and smooth and even with the rest of the wood. Good morning, it's Tuesday and I am waiting for the garage to warm up and I brought my coveralls in so they could warm up. Um, <laughs> it's cold in the garage and uh, you know this time of year it gets it's like in the 50s and high 40s and it's kind of this uh, it's not that cold but it is cold and um, yesterday it was rainy and cold so it actually made my wood filler 
dry very slowly. So I have a little bit of sanding to do this morning um, just in that area, just sanding off the areas that I put the plastic wood X. There were a few scratches and little gouges. Most of it I could sand off, but there were some that I had to use the wood biller. I wanted to show you up close the stain before I sanded it down because it was very, I don't know how else to describe it, but it was kind of bubbly, but hard. So it was, it was weird. And um, I wanted to get rid of that. So I used my 60 grit sponge sander and it was so satisfying. You just kind of went crick, crick, and it was smooth, like buttery smooth. So that was a nice surprise that that came off so easily because I anticipated that to be a much harder job or a longer job and it really wasn't. So far this piece has been pretty easy to deal with, knock on wood. You never know. And I don't like to say anything positive because I feel like, uh, don't speak too soon. So that's just the way I am. I'm gonna use restoration bronze and then I think there is trim around the top and then there's trim around the middle of the high boy. I called it a tall boy in the beginning. I think you can use either one, but um, I believe it's actually called a high boy. It looks like two pieces connected together and then there's trim around it, or it looks like crown molding to me, flat. <laughs> um, so I thought maybe I would paint that knapsack khaki, which is also one. Um, and the one colors, again, are primer, and top coat all in one. I think it's time to get to work. Stick around. Here is one of those spots that was so satisfying to sand. And I think you can kind of see how smooth it is after I sand it and wipe it off with my microfiber cloth. <laughs> I love those microfiber cloths. I want to point out that I'm using my respirator when I am sanding the Plastic Wood X because Plastic Wood X has silica sand in it. So you don't want to mess around with that. Make sure you're wearing your respirator. I'm using my square brush by Zebra. And really, I only used these two paint brushes and I used a roller. And the roller, I really like these Purdy Ultra Finish Jumbo. They're very, they're very soft and plush, and they gave me a really nice finish. I really didn't even have to sand afterwards, which is unusual, even you know with a finishing pad. If you've ever painted a wall with a roller, you will know that you have to cut in before you paint the whole wall. And I do the same thing with the furniture because you can't get that roller. You can get it all the way up there, but sometimes you get it on spots you don't really want to. So that's kind of a, you know, that's a personal preference. I want to share with you, I have gotten into the habit of painting on the inside of the dresser where the drawers go, just in case when you pull out the drawer, you would see the inside and you don't want that. You want to see it if it's painted. So why not go ahead and do that, whether you think you're going to see it or not. It's just a good practice. Quick tip. If you're painting the trim around the drawers and you know that you're staining the top, you don't have to really worry as much about getting the paint on the top because you can sand it off afterwards. So you wanna paint that first. I am using Knapsack Khaki. It's also Melange One color because I really like how it goes with so many different colors and it makes a really nice trim. So there you go. Look at that. <laughs> I like this little segment because it's just nice and smooth.
I'm using this Minwax pre-stain wood conditioner uh, just to make it a little easier to actually stain it. This doesn't color the wood, it just brings uh, moisture back into the wood. And you know, if the wood's really dry, it's pretty good for it. To fill the holes in the drawers, I used quick wood. It is an epoxy. It's quite different than the wood filler that I usually use, but once in a while I pull this out. I got a bad batch of this recently, but I figured out if I don't need it quite as much, because you have to knead the two colors together, it didn't harden up so fast. So then you just have to go back and you sand it down. You might want to start with 120. I think I just went right with a 60 grit, but take your time. After I finished conditioning the drawers, I put them inside because they weren't drying very quickly. And I wanted to make sure, because there were some funky spots on there, and I wanted to make sure that they were gonna dry the funky spots. <laughs> Measure twice, cut once. If you make a mistake, I mark everything with a black Sharpie. You probably think I'm crazy, but it comes off with mineral spirits, so no worries there. Just remember, measure twice, cut once. Alrighty, it's day three, and I have had to take a step back today, uh, kind of reevaluate, sort of see where we're at. Well, the hardware came in the mail, and this is it. And as I look at it, it it's starting to grow on me. And they're they're very loose, so they're not they're not straight or anything. But I wanted to get a visual. Yesterday, I decided to paint this drawer um, because the drawers are so small. The hardware's big. This drawer, it's it's all one big drawer, but there's a lot of hardware on here. And I think putting four of these here, I didn't even bother because I just know it's gonna look like too much. As much as I like the natural wood, I think it might look better if this drawer was painted because I just think it would look nicer. I'm going to put wood filler in these and then I will paint it and then I can put this hardware in. Thankfully I have enough. That leaves these three drawers with the natural wood. I think that I am going to darken the wood just a little bit. This wood is beautiful, but this is not going away. And I, that happened after I put on the conditioner. I think that it might look better painted anyway, even though these are gorgeous veins. Um, I think I'm going to have to sacrifice that uh, for aesthetics, really. Now, the other thing I've been thinking about in my head, I don't care if they don't match. I like the combination. So I'm either gonna have to do something with these, but I'm actually kind of liking this color. So more likely I will do something to these, but I'm not sure what yet. This is all part of the process and I thought I should really stop and bring you in and tell you what's going on in my head. There have been a lot of decisions that I've had to make today in order to get the results that I was looking for. As I go along with each project that I do, you always have to make adjustments. There's very few times that I'll think, okay, this is what I want to do. And then I start working and I get all the way to the end and it's exactly what I thought it was going to be. No, it, it's all process, decision making, weighing out, okay, how does this look versus this? That's the process and that's the part I love. I'm not afraid to make changes and you shouldn't be either. So that's where I'm at. I didn't mention to you, I think that this wood is cherry after speaking to Phil. We kind of decided it was either maple or cherry, but it has a lot of red in it. So with that in mind, there's the cherry stain and there's the English chestnut because I wanted, I didn't want it to be pink. I didn't want it to be red. 
I wanted it to be kind of a combination of red and brown, but more brown, but not too dark. <laughs> so I just started stirring them up and mixing it a little at a time. Always mix things a little bit at a time or you will be mixing forever. Once I got the desired color, I went ahead and put it on the drawers. And I'm quite happy with the color that I came up with. I think that looks really, really nice. All right, I was yakking so much, I didn't really tell you what I was doing with these holes, but same thing, I used the quick wood and I, again, sanded it down carefully. And then I just went back with a tack cloth and then went ahead and painted it. So that really didn't take long at all. Now, I've said this before, Sometimes you find that there are flaws, if you want to call them that, or gouges, scratches, whatever, in the wood after you paint one coat. And that's okay. Sometimes that's a good thing because then you can hit them up with your wood filler and wait for it to dry, sand it, and paint it again. Going through the same process again, uh, depending on where you are going to put your hardware. And it took me a few minutes to get this hardware straight while I was leaning over it like I was. I decided to just change the hardware on the top, very little. So I'm using some gold gilding wax by Dixie Belle and I'm using a dry brush technique to hit it up a little bit so it has some gold accents to it, but it doesn't lose that rustic antique look. Now I hit it too much, so I went back with some mineral spirits and just took off some of the gold there you go. That looks much better, right? I think so. We are nearing the end. I'm putting more and more hardware on. There's a lot of hardware on this piece. For this particular project, putting on the hardware was much easier. When I put the cup holes on with the drawers in the dresser, sometimes I learn the hard way. I do that first and then I do it the easier way. Well, friends, that's all I have for you this week. I really love how this came out. I wasn't sure about the hardware when I got in the mail today. <laughs> I just decided to go with it, mixed two stains together and made my own custom stain. And I really like how that turned out too. I added a little gilding wax to the top knobs. I'm really excited about this one. I think it really turned out nice. And this Restoration Bronze is really the bomb. I'm going to use it again for sure. Thanks for being here. See you next time. You can do it. Hands, it slipped away.